Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back here at Young and Investing. In this video, we are going to do a market update. It has been a while since we did our last market update that was in January. So I think it needs some attention, uh, the market. We need to have a look at a fresh new look at the Bitcoin dominance and also at some altcoins because they are doing pretty well since the new year, since the beginning of 2020. Uh, but what are they going to do in the next few months? And what is Bitcoin going to do in the next few months? So we're going to have a look at that as well. So uh, guys, also what I wanted to mention is that, um, that I'm going to make a lot more videos uh, from now on. So uh, I'm already having a list of things I want to do such as um, a new portfolio update. I'm going to do a review of Algorand very soon because that is my latest buy. I'm going to do some other stuff as well, but if you have some suggestions of things I, I can do or coins that I can talk about on my channel or do a review about, just leave your thoughts, leave your suggestions in the comment section down below. And yeah, maybe I'm going to talk about it uh, one of the next few weeks. Okay, guys, let's check out Coin Paprika. I'm not working with Coin Market Cap anymore uh, because I think Coin Paprika has a lot more advantages. You could see the liquidity, you could see the one hour, 24 hours, seven days. Uh, you could also see that more or less on Coin Market Cap, but it was less uh, straightforward. More analytics, ex more analytics, sorry, as well of all the individual cryptocurrencies. So I really like this website. So that is why I currently using coin paprika for those who are wondering why i'm suddenly using this anyway so let's check out bitcoin um in 24 hours it's down 0.2 percent last seven days three percent so basically just hanging in there and not doing a lot ethereum same story down 0.7 percent uh in the last 24 hours in the last week it is two percent almost two percent down xrp is really the most stable coin of them all since january uh, it's not doing anything. It's not really going up in Satoshi value uh, right now. Also just hanging in there, not doing a lot. Um, XRP season will come. XRP season is an alternative to alt season because XRP suddenly starts pumping and that is always very massive. But uh, for now, it doesn't seem like it is going to pump. Uh, maybe it's going to catch us by surprise. Who knows? But XRP, it will pump. But for now it doesn't want to uh, anyway let's have a look to the rest of the top 20 there are some outperformers we see here tezos the first big outperformer up um, almost 11 percent in the last seven days Chainlink, 40 percent up in the last seven days Chainlink is an absolute unit an absolute beast lately uh, setting new all-time highs in Bitcoin value all the time, new all-time high in, in USD value as well today. So Chainlink really looks so unstoppable, looks so good in 2020 as it did in 2019 as well, because it was one of the best performing assets back then as well. Um, Huobi token also doing very well in the top 20. We see it 30%, 13% up in the last seven days. Um, some other outperformers in uh, the top 100 are NIM here, 15%, VeChain 10%. Most of that is actually from the last hour anyway. FTX token, that's that new um, derivatives exchange, but uh, I don't want to spend too much attention on it because I don't like derivatives. I don't like gambling. Uh, I mean, like I, I see it as some kind of gambling uh, so many people are just losing money. There are only a few winning. So yeah, I don't like to talk about it too much. Algorand, my latest buy. I'm also going to talk about that. As I said, do a review about it. 8% up in the last seven days. Some more here, over 20%. Icon, 11%. Hidera Hashgraph, almost 40% up. Um, I did a review about that a few weeks ago. And um, I really want to buy it. I really want to buy Hedera Hashgraph, but the reason I didn't do it yet is still because there is too much price volatility. Uh, so it's going up too hard in, in both directions. So I want to see some the volatility to go down. 
Um, but I also want to see less selling pressure. Um, it doesn't have like a lot of circulating supply right now. It's only a few percent. And every month there is a huge selling pressure, a huge inflation rate uh, that is being added to the circulating supply. So that I, I, I want to see what the what the, the coin is going to do over the next few months. So I'm going to wait a little bit more uh, until I see what the effect is of the of the intense token release schedule. Um, I would prefer them to announce like a new token release schedule that is slowing down things uh, like Algorand did. And that was, also, that was also the reason why I bought Algorand because they released that. Uh, now the token release is 85% slower than it was uh, before. So I hope to see something similar for Hedera Hashgraph so I can buy it because huge project, huge partnership with Google as well. So keep an eye on that. Um, here we see Kyber Network 32% up, Feastism 28%, and we see Swipe 33%, and of course Matic Network also doing really well here uh, with 44% up. Then we see Chili's also up, and the funny thing is, uh, lately when when a cryptocurrency announce announces a partnership with Chainlink, it starts pumping because there's basically just an, an, an an announcement that Chillis is going to use uh, the Chainlink Oracle uh, network and it started pumping from that announcement. So I don't know why that is, but lately that is really the trend. People that have a partnership with Chainlink just start randomly pumping uh, like they have with a big company or something. So yeah, it's remarkable to see, but I wanted to mention that as well. So as we could see, really a, a lot more green actually than red. Um, and if we see red, it's most of the times not really um, a lot that are going down in the last seven days. So basically, they are outperforming Bitcoin overall, I think, because Bitcoin is down 3%. Most of them are, are, are less than 3% down. Most of them are positive uh, anyway. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin dominance. That's pretty important to talk about that. Um, so yeah, from the beginning of January, which is here, we were at 71%. Uh, then we had basically pretty good time for altcoins uh the dominance uh, went down to 62 percent and then it retested the previous support as resistance that is what currently is happening so we saw that it was pretty good support historic support it is also a fibonacci level as you can see 0.5 fibonacci level at 66 percent and we have this retest right now of the fibonacci level of the support level and it looks that it's going to be a resistance right now. And I think that from that point, from this point, we are going to see some more altcoin action over the next few months. Why do I think that? Because I think that Bitcoin will, will stay into the range that it is right now for at least a few more months until the halving. Maybe it's going up before the halving and then go down afterwards for a little while and then start pumping again. Uh, but I don't see it going below 7,000. I don't see it going convincingly over 10,000 to 14,000 as well. So um, I, I know that's a broad range, but I mean, like, I, I don't see it going down and up a, a lot in the next few few months. I think it will just hang in there for a while, uh, go to 10,000, then go back to 8,000, maybe go to 12,000, go back to 10,000. That is what I think Bitcoin will do, like, not a lot. I think the, the altcoins will keep on outperforming at least for a few more months until we have done the halving, the Bitcoin halving. Um, and after the Bitcoin halving, I think after a while, after the Bitcoin halving, maybe a few months only after the Bitcoin halving, I think Bitcoin will start running again, go for new all-time highs or retest the previous all-time high at least. And then I think we will see the Bitcoin dominance rising again. So I think altcoin action for the, for the next few months until May. And I think after that, from May or June, I think we will see a correction in that. Altcoins go down, Bitcoin will start running again. That is what I think. Um, also because this lo really looks like a bearish retest. And also because, of course, it broke out out of this uh, rising wedge right here, um, which we are already in since the top of the altcoin cycle. Uh, the top of the Bitcoin cycle was one month earlier, was here. Um, but then altcoins kept on running for a month longer. 
And from that point, the Bitcoin dominance started rising again. And now it broke out out of this rising wedge, uh, which usually usually happens around 75 to 80 percent of completion of the pattern. And that is exactly what it did. So bearish retest here. And I think we will continue our way down. Um, another scenario is when we when we unlock actually the logarithmic chart, because right now what I just showed is a logarithmic chart. Um, there is another possibility that will look like this and that is more like um, a channel in which it is moving and that of course is not a really good thing so if we are not looking at a logarithmic chart it looks like this and then it could just be like the retest of of um, of the strand line right here um, and then we could go to higher highs for the bitcoin dominance I don't think this will happen. I think the first scenario of the rising wedge breaking out downwards is more likely that this happened, but I wanted to show you guys because this is of course a possibility, but I don't see Bitcoin going towards like 84% dominance ever again. I don't see it happening as long as human nature is human nature and there is greed and there is speculation in this market. I don't think it is going towards these levels, especially when you see what Ethereum is currently developing, um, an entire DeFi ecosystem, um, a lot of um, enterprise adoption coming as well. So yeah, I don't see it happening. So I think the first scenario is more likely. Okay, let's check out Bitcoin. Um, this is what I showed you guys in the beginning of January, what I think will Bitcoin will do. So maybe we will go towards this uh, this previous highs which we had, which we had in 2019, retest that, go down a little bit after the halving, and then start for a good run towards the previous all-time highs, which we had in December 2017. So that is what I think Bitcoin will do over the next few months and actually the rest of the year before actually breaking it and going to a new all-time high. Uh, by the end of, of the middle of 2022. That is what I think Bitcoin will do. Like I said, I think it will just hang around a little bit and go very slowly over the next few months. Um, and altcoins, I think they will have some more time to play around. Let's have a look at Algorand. Um, it is actually a pretty good example of a lot of cryptocurrencies, a lot of altcoins right now. Um, a lot of them are currently or in a range or just breaking out of the range. Most of them are already out of the accumulation range. Um, Algorand had its accumulation from the beginning of September until the end of February, so half a year of accumulation between 2,250 and 4,000 Satoshis. It broke out upwards from that. It retested it as support and currently it is bouncing up again. So I think it is going for continuation and we will probably end up somewhere over here between 7,500 and 8,200 before the next major correction. So, uh, like I said, I'm buying, I've, I've bought Algorand for the long term, so I'm not going to trade on that. Um, but uh, that is what I think. So, I think we will end up in this area here by May or so. And, and then I think we will see um, a good correction coming for Algorand. That is what I think will happen. Chainlink, let's take a moment of appreciation for this beauty of a chart. This is literally art, literally. Look how amazing this chart of Chainlink looks like. Um, it's so extremely bullish. Um, yeah, I have no words for it. it. It really reminds me to see like the chart of Ethereum of 2016, 2017. Um, it really looks like this. So if it keeps on going, uh, it's surprising everyone. It's making new all-time highs all the time. So yeah, amazing, amazing chart. This trend line here, we see that trend line had some touches on it. Currently going for an overvaluation, I think, and then going back to the trend line. Um, I think this overvaluation can go higher, but I mean like 80,000 is the max for, for this run, I think, because there is the 1.618 uh, Fibonacci level. So Fibonacci extension lays there at 80,000 Satoshis. And I think it will have like a very good run by then. And I think we will go to the trend line of if we hit that. So um, it, it won't go up forever, of course. It needs to have some corrections in between. Um, in Chainlink's case, it is going up forever, but it 
need some corrections. That's what I wanted to say. So um, I think, yeah, we will see a touch of this trend line later on this year after we made like a new all time high for, for Chainlink, but it's still going right now. So looking really, really great. Uh, let's have a look at the USD chart because today it made a new all time high. It's currently struggling a little bit because Bitcoin just had a little drop of, of percentage. So um, it would be great if we see um, Chainlink closing at these levels or above the previous all time high and retest that as support. Then I see some more continuation in the USD chart. But for now, um, it's still hanging under it. So not too sure. Maybe it's then it's for tomorrow, but I think it will manage to do that. Close above 5% of uh, $5, retest this previous all time high and then go a little bit higher. Actually, what I what I've drawn right here, I think will happen already. This was normally planned in my prediction video for Chainlink for July, but it's just really going higher than I expected uh, and going faster than I expected. So I thought it would go to, towards 3.2, then have a correction, then go up towards this previous all time high, but it already did that b b without a correction. So it went all the way immediately to the previous all time high, had a correction towards the level, which I thought it would correct to, so more or less. And currently it looks like it's already going for my Fibonacci extension here, the 1.618, which is around $6.6. .6. So it could be that it's already going to hit that. It would be really, really amazing. Uh, last thing I want to show you is the Ethereum chart. Um, Ethereum uh, is just hanging in there. It looks pretty good. We had a more or less a double bottom here. Um, then we went th right through this resistance level. Uh, which was pretty strong resistance and currently we are retesting it as support. We already had a few retests of this support level. Um, so I, I need to see it bounce pretty soon. Otherwise it is going to be too many touches on the support line. So then I will be a little bit worried. For now it still looks good, but we need to see a better bounce for Ethereum. Um, but yeah, I still believe in Ethereum for 2020. Uh, Ethereum 2.0 is coming. Uh, DeFi is growing very quickly. DeFi, decentralized finance industry, uh, we see enterprise adoption for Ethereum as well. Uh, for example, Consensus is also going to announce new uh, new partners. They say like we're going to announce two of the biggest um, companies in the world which who are going to use their blockchain, their Hyperledger blockchains, uh, which can also run on, on Ethereum. Um, so yeah, it looks really good for, for Ethereum. The enterprise adoption looks good. The DeFi looks good. Uh, Ethereum 2.0 will be out in 2020. So I think it will go a lot higher. And if we look to the USD chart, that actually looks uh, better than the, the, the BTC chart. The BTC chart is just hanging in there, um, looking for some more retests of the support level. Uh, so yeah, I hope it doesn't fall through it again. But I mean, like this looks really good. I mean, the, the USD chart looks good. And uh, maybe we'll see a retest of this level again. I wouldn't be surprised to see a retest of 200 before continuation higher. And I think we will end the year around $400, maybe even higher, 400 to 480. Uh, we will see about that. But I think Ethereum also looking for a very good year 2020. Uh, price wise. So that is it for the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and please if so give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel please subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down below and I see you next video. Cheers. Bye bye.